I have attended St. Barth since I was three. I've grown up in a Christian home. From the start of my life, my parents taught me about Christianity and the Bible. They read the Bible to me, as well as many different stories that reflect the teachings of the Bible. We would also pray at every meal and before we went to sleep. As I grew up, they taught me about the good and bad of the world, and not to trust in material things. I would not be where I am today without their teaching and guidance. I've attended St. Bart's for 14, er, I started attending St. Bart's 14 years ago. And through my years here, I've gone to Sunday school, and I've participated in vacation Bible school. I was confirmed in 2013, when I was in eighth grade. Everything that I have learned up to this point has set me up to be the person that I am today, but it can only go so far. My parents and, and the church had taught me a lot about the Christian faith, but eventually it was time for me to take a step of my own. Around the time that I started confirmation class, I began to read the Bible at home. I was interested in what the Bible had to say, and I wanted to learn more. I now see that this was the start of God pulling me to him, and it would be two more years before I fully took a step of faith. When I entered sixth grade in the fall of 2010, I began to get involved with the St. Bart's Youth Group. Although Youth Group was great, and I did learn a lot about the Christian faith, I stopped attending meetings. This was not because there was anything wrong with the Youth Group, but I just didn't feel the need to go. I would not attend again until three years later. At the end of ninth grade, in the spring of 2014, I decided to attend youth group again. I believe that the meeting I attended was the last one of the school year. I can still remember how nervous I felt as I returned to this place that I hadn't been at for three years. It turns out that this was the most important youth group meeting that I would attend yet. After the meeting, my mom and I were talking with the youths, and he mentioned that there were a few spots still open for kingdom bound lessons. I never considered going to Kingdom Bound before, but now that I had the option, I decided to go. It turns out that there were just enough spots left for my mom, my sister, and I, and we realized this was more than a coincidence. This was the year God wanted us to go to Kingdom Bound. Kingdom Bound 2014 was the place where I finally began to know God, as, uh, to know God on a more personal level. I can still remember how the words of the singer at the concert on the first night had moved me and how I was continually moved by what I experienced over those four days. Through those four days, I learned about God as more than a ruler in the sky. I learned that he loves me, and he wants me. Kingdom Bound 2014 was where I fully committed my life to Jesus, and this was just the start of my walk with God. After Kingdom Bound, my life changed. I had a new passion to serve God, not just because I had to, but because I wanted to. Before Kingdom Bound, I did not listen to music, and I hated singing. The most I listened to were soundtracks for Star Wars and the TV show Merle. After Kingdom Bound, I began to listen to Christian music and radio. I began to buy CDs from many different Christian singers, and I couldn't get enough. As I listened to this music, I began to learn more about God and the teachings of the Bible. The music also changed me in another way. Um, as I, said, as I said, I hated singing, but as I listened to music, I began to sing along, at first in my head, and then out loud. It wasn't until this past Christmas pageant that I actually sang in front of a group of people, and this was something I never thought I would do, so don't tell me that there isn't a gap. In 10th grade, the year after I attended Kingdom Bound, I became involved in my school's Bible club. Here, along with Deacon Reitz and a teacher at my school, I developed my faith by reading and studying the Bible. It wasn't enough to keep this passion I had for Christ to myself. I wanted others to know. The main way that I did this was by incorporating my faith into my school work. For example, I wrote an essay in English about the Gospel of John. In 11th grade, the Bible, Club membership, Bible Club's membership grew. Because of this, we were able to do more to promote the club in school. The biggest event that we ran was the showing of the movie God's Not Dead in the school's auditorium <coughs> um, on Friday evening. We put a lot of work into this event, and while only around 20 people showed up, we ministered to many others while promoting the event in school and talking to those who asked what was going on in the auditorium while we were showing the movie. In school, I worked to incorporate my faith more and more into everything I did. 
I noticed that as I did this, people began to realize that I was a Christian. About halfway through the year, I began to carry a Bible around with me through school. Just sitting in the lunchroom or the library and reading it allowed me to meet people that I would not have met otherwise. I began to incorporate my faith into Boy Scouts as well. I would plan and run a religious service at every Scout event that I would attend. I also found that much of what we learn in Scouts is what is also taught in the Bible. <coughs> when I talk about what we learn in Scouts, I'm not referring to the Nazi and fire building, but the core values of Scouting, such as the duty to God, country, others, and self and being trustworthy, friendly, obedient, clean, and reverent. <coughs> Scouts also teaches different leadership type, leadership styles, but the one that it promotes the most is servant leadership. This is, this is simply explained as serving first and leading second. Jesus is the perfect example of servant leadership, especially when he washes the disciples' feet. This is an example of servant leadership because it shows Jesus, the Son of God, taking on the role of a servant instead of a leader. In November 2015, I attended Footsteps, a youth retreat event held in Erie, Pennsylvania. This, like Kingdom Bound, was another big step for me in my walk of faith. Here I met many youth who had the same passion that I did. I learned about God's grace and his mercy, and met people who said it was okay to fail, because God will always love and watch us. In April 2016, I returned to Footsteps on Team, or staff. In doing this, I learned more about the importance of prayer and the many different ways to pray. Also in April 2016, I went on my first mission trip. For this trip, the youth group traveled to Webster Springs, West Virginia, and helped many people who were in need. I, along with a couple of other people from the youth group, helped a woman clean out and re begin to repair her mobile home. This was a very humbling experience. One of my favorite moments from the trip was when we worshiped with a group from Florida that was staying in the same church that we were. It was an amazing experience worshiping with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. In this moment, I saw the church, what, what the church should really look like, people who don't know each other, coming together to praise the God that they all know and who knows them. Moments like this have shown me the spe special connections that Christians have that aren't normally seen between people. Over the past two years in school, I've worked on a large essay that I, ha that I have to write for a program that I'm part of. Because this essay is very time consuming, I was told to write it about something that I'm interested in. I chose to write it about Christianity's impact on the founding of the United States. I did this not only because it's a topic that I'm interested in, but also because I wanted my faith to be incorporated into one of the most important things that I will be doing in all my years of school so far. <coughs> At the beginning of this year, 12th grade, I had to apply, for co apply to colleges. When applying to colleges, I had to write an essay. After thinking about how to start my essay for a while, I decided to start it with this quote, I don't want to be a leader, I want to be a follower. This is a quote from Mike Donahue, the lead singer of my favorite band, Thames Avenue North. I chose this quote because it goes against the common perception about leadership, that one should be a leader, not a follower. This idea of being a follower made me, really made me think because for most of my life, I've been taught to be a leader. When Mike explain, what, what Mike explains after he says this quote is that we as Christians are called to be followers of Christ. That means that all we have to do is follow God. We don't need to make a path of our own. God has already made one for us. Mike even says that Jesus was never called a leader, but instead he did the will of his Father in heaven. I chose this quote because I want whatever college I go to to know about my faith and that I want to live as a follower, not a leader. Through these past three years, since Kingdom in 2014, I have found some people who are interested in my faith and others who make a joke out of it. There's a song by the band Sidewalk Prophets called Something Different, and it talks about there being something that makes Christians different from other people, and that people notice this. Therefore, I'm glad whether someone is interested in my faith or making a joke out of it, because it means that I am being something different. It means that I'm showing people what I truly believe. There's a book that my mom read me as a child called With You All the Way, that I find myself thinking about. It's about three knights who are given a quest by a prince to, 
travel to the king's castle. He says that whoever reaches the castle first will have the princess's hand in marriage. To reach the castle, they will have to, have to travel through a dark forest. The way to get through the forest is to listen to the song, song that the king plays on his flute. The problem is that there are beings in the forest that all play similar songs. The only person who knows the same song as the king is the prince. Each of the knights has their own unique ability, and each are allowed to bring one companion with them. Once they have each chosen a companion, they leave for the king's castle. A few days later, one of the knights appears at the castle. When he is asked how he found his way through the forest, he reveals his companion, the prince. I have always enjoyed this story because of how well it explains our walk as Christians. We all have our own unique abilities, but we can only truly make it through this life by listening to the song of the prince, Jesus, to lead us to the king, God. This song can be heard throughout all areas of our life, whether we expect it or not. It is heard in the Bible, through the singers and speakers who share about Christ, as well as the least of these, and those we don't think it will come from at all. My goal in life is to listen for Jesus playing the Father's song, because I know it's there, for he is with us all the way. Thank you.